everyone. My name is Susan and this is my daughter Lisa. Hello. Thank you for this opportunity to talk to you. Lisa was diagnosed with alopecia when she was three years old. So she's been wearing a wig, having lots of treat very painful treatments through the years. But um, she's been very brave. She needs a new wig, which is, would be more comfortable and less warm more natural and we would really appreciate any donations, hair donations from you guys. Thank you to Delia and this campaign. We really appreciate it. Bye bye. Hi guys, I'm Delia and I'm Liz and we're from a few grey hairs in South Africa, Johannesburg. Lisa came along to us, a little girl of 12 and um, she does have alopecia. And I think at the age of six, she started to wear a wig for the first time. And um, now she's 12, as I say, and she's now needing to have her next wig. Because she's so, in the background. Um, and you can imagine how difficult it is for a 12-year-old to go through this ordeal. But however, um, the girls from Kingsmead, uh, King David schools all donated ponytails and they gave us enough hair in order to make a wig for Lisa. There she is there with her new wig on and um, we're thrilled. Lisa's thrilled and I think the girls from the schools are thrilled um, because it's all worked out very nicely for her before Christmas. So happy Christmas Lisa. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa Fraser. I'm 12 years old. I've had a special since I was two years old and I was wearing, um, I've been wearing a wig since I was seven. Today I received a new wig. I'm very proud of my new long beautiful hair. The wig was made by the girls that donated the ponies of their hair. Thanks to Aunt, Aunt Liz and Delia. Funny. Funny. Say hi to the girls. Say hi to Kingsmead. Good girl. Good girl. Say hi to the girls. Say hi to the girls, Bunny. No, no, no. Hi, girls. My name's Alexandra, and I'm currently studying a master's degree in fine arts at WITS. I'm very excited to be part of this campaign. I've been waiting for a new wig for a long time um, and, and receiving one with the help of your donations would just, would just top off a really good time for me. I recently got a guide dog called Bonnie and she's just made everything good and, um, and she's helped me a lot and so kind of Receiving a wig at this time would also be, I think, really positive for me. Um, uh, I have a condition called ectodermal dysplasia, um, which uh, uh, in part affects my hair. And so um, I've been losing my hair since I was maybe 13. Um, but when I became blind three years ago, it did become a lot worse. So, um, so even though I can't see, I think I know that I still live in a visual world and, and girls like to look pretty, I think, for ourselves, if not for anyone else. If this is a very, very big thank you to all the girls from Kingsmead and the girls and boys from King David who donated all their little ponytails, or long ponytails, should I say, to make this beautiful wig for Alexi. And she's here with Bonnie, her guide dog, so we're very honored. But I just want to say thank you to you girls and boys. It wouldn't have been possible. And also to the people that helped Dina and I to uh, harvest the hair. Thank you. And we just want to, um just let you know that the hair that we received that day has been used in this wig for, for Lexi and, um, and the remaining hair was used to help 
raise the funds to make it. So lucky person. Lex, do you want to say anything? <laughs> I want to say a huge thank you to the Kingsmead and uh, King David's donors. Even though it seems like a very little bit to donate, when everyone groups together, you can do amazing things. Um, I want to say a huge thank you to Liz and Delia for putting in so much work. Um, the Christmas elves have nothing on you. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, I can't wait to start 2019 um, with my beautiful hair. Um, and just thank you for making me so happy. Mm. Such a pleasure. diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer shortly after the birth of my first child and a few weeks after my 31st birthday. It was a huge shock. I was given a few months to live. Their main goal was to get me to my daughter's first birthday and she will be turning 4 soon. I've been through a lot of chemotherapy but have been very blessed in that the treatment that I was on didn't affect my hair, which I'm very much attached to. But one thing I've learned a lot is that the power of community, of people, just general kindness that comes from strangers. I started a blog, it's called Claire's Light, it's on Facebook, so I update that every week. I would love to be able to keep my hair, uh, unfortunately it's not going to be the case of me and I need to have a wig made um, and I would love a wig to be made out of my own hair. My daughter as well is very much attached to my hair, uh, shame she's still, she's only turning four in a few months so it's quite a thing for her as well. So when I explain to her I'm, I'm going to harvest the hair and, and make a wig out of my own hair she seemed to be a lot happier with that. Um, Unfortunately, all of these things do cost money. You you can go and get a, a cheap wig from somewhere, but I know most ca cancer patients would prefer not to do that uh, because it, it does look like a wig and it looks like something that's not natural. And you just want to hold on to that part of yourself, I suppose, which I think is, is beautiful that there are people that are able to, to do that. Um, and, and raising funds is an important part of it because people cannot afford with all of these treatments that they're going through to spend money on something that's seemingly cosmetic is, is hard for a lot of people to do and so they don't um, or they, they suffer through it um, and it's very emotional um, to not have your hair. I've seen people who have lost their hair and it's really hard to go through. Um, so initiatives such as this to be able to raise funds for someone like myself to to get a wig or other cancer patients, people who don't have their hairs, is fantastic. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. This is so special actually to be able to have a wig made out of your own hair. I think it's incredible that you are able to do that and provide that for for people like myself going through something like this. Because it is, you want that connection to your to yourself. Firstly, I have to say thank you so much, Liz and Dina, for this beautiful wig. It doesn't even look like a wig. It just looks like myself. And I feel like I have a huge part of me back. I've mm -hmm. had stage four cancer now for four years. Uh, the treatment I've on was made me have quite a bit of hair loss and I had to cut off all my hair, which was quite upsetting for me because I've never cut my hair shorter than like this when I was seven um, but I think more so it was really quite devastating for my little girl she's only four and she's never gotten used to the fact that I now suddenly have short hair and um, she still draws me as having long hair in all her pictures and she just started school and she has to draw a family picture and of course she draws me with long hair mm -hmm. and then People, obviously her friends have seen now that I have clearly not mm -hmm. got long hair or much of hair mm -hmm. um, and they say to her, no that's not your mommy 
and, and she was very adamant that it is her mommy and her mommy has beautiful hair. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm so excited mm -hmm. to be able to go and fetch her from school today, mm -hmm. hopefully, um, with my hair. It's been such a adjustment to go from having really long hair to having nothing mm -hmm. um, or like very very sparse hair in comparison to and what it was. And there was so much. I <laughs> still made it. Um, and here it is. And it doesn't <laughs> even it doesn't even look like a wig. It's amazing. I think uh, as a, a woman and as a cancer when you're fighting cancer it's you know it, it might seem to a lot of people who aren't going through it they might think oh no but oh it's just here don't worry it'll grow Yes, it will grow eventually if you can stop treatment, which mm -hmm. I, I can't. Um, I'm awaiting a liver transplant. But it's a long time to to not feel like yourself. You already right. you already don't feel like yourself at all um, mm -hmm. from the the treatment that you get. And people do look at you strange. People don't recognize you, and you kind of you just brush it off and you say, oh well, oh no. I've I've got cancer and you know this is now I've lost my hair and, uh, but it, it is horrible always having to explain yourself uh, mm -hmm. to people mm -hmm. and it would just to be able to have have this back I feel like I have a part of me back Wonderful. and, That's very and I was, Wonderful. I was trying, to, that I was trying to not think about it too much you know I'm like oh well it's it's gone now just suck it up and you know get over it and I, I thought I was doing very well. <laughs> um, and then when I when I came for my fitting and I saw my hair and I'm like, oh my word, it's my hair. I can't believe that it's actually my hair. And I put it on and I'm like, oh, I can I can feel it's myself. And then when I had to get on the car and I was driving home, I'm like, where did I go? <laughs> I, I left part of me back there. I need to I need to go back and I need to go get it. You know, um, Claire, uh, what you're experiencing there, we hear from other women, and it is. It is the sense of it's a little bit of yourself that you can keep and you can take back. And the campaign that we are building titled The Hairs with Love, it is, um, it is what Liz and I are trying to build. And Claire has actually been a recipient through that campaign. And the, uh, the, the, the funds for the manufacture costs of her wig. Um, were raised from two different sets of people. The one, lot of people are Claire's followers from her blog um, called Claire's Light on Facebook. And the other ones that were raised came from the hair that was donated through Kingsmead Girls College and King David in Victory Park. So we just want to say thank you girls, thank you for being involved. Without your hair donations, Claire wouldn't have been able to receive a wig manufactured for her, specially made to size. And it's just so lovely. Liz and I, our intention from the beginning was to be able to give women a break. Give someone like Claire and the other three videos that you've watched just a just a chance, just a little break in a very difficult time in their lives. So we just want to reach out and say thanks, girls. Thank you so much. I know it's hard for you to, to cut off your hair, but you don't have to cut up a lot to donate and make a difference. You don't, even, tiny pony you don't even see it. And thank you for, for doing that and for giving me this this gift of a bit of myself back, uh, for giving my daughter her, her version of her mommy Money. back. Uh, mm. This is it's very special. So thank you for your, your gifts, your financial contributions, for your donations of your hair, for the people that have donated their time um, to you. To help our volunteers. Especially. I mean, when we go yeah. through to the schools, we have a team of women who volunteer, and without their help, it really would be a lot more difficult. So, big hugs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye from a few grey hairs. Goodbye.